Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I hope you're having a fantastic time wherever you are. And in today's episode, we're going to have a look at our source manager implementation. Let me start this episode by answering one of the uh, questions that I get uh, often. People usually uh, ask me about my environment, like what tools uh, do I use and stuff like that. Um, so I have an editor, which is a Emacs based editor. I'm, I'm working on it for about 11 or 12 years now. And it went through lots of iterations. I'm working on the V3 at the moment. This is what you see, uh, both my editor and my window manager, both of them are practically my editor. So I boot into my editor directly. And as for what I use for the presentation, I guess I use org mode, which is a, like a Emacs library. It's like amazing. And um, so I was thinking of creating another video series uh, in parallel to this one, just about that editor and the work I'm doing in that area. It's actually really nice. I, I, I love it. I use it for a long time now. And it might be a good idea to uh, share my experience with other people as well. So hopefully I'm going to start that one soon as well. It's going to be all about uh, eLisp and how to create an editor or set up the environment. How did I, I don't know, create a different API, diff different interfaces for uh, different tasks that I usually do or my daily routines and stuff like that. I'm, I'm like that video series, uh, like I, I, I don't have any specific plan for that one yet, but it's going to happen soon. Hopefully these days I'm pretty much, uh, busy with the Serene board. So speaking of Serene, um, updates as usual, I'm still working on the JIT and, um, to be honest, it's far more complicated than I expected. And obviously it's going to take a while to finish it up. I tried different uh, approaches to create an uh, JIT and they went well, but since uh, Serene is not a, like a static language, um, it's not easy to actually finish up, finish up the JIT uh, as soon as possible. I have to eat uh, like, iterate over some ideas, uh, create some POC code, and kind of evaluate the uh, different approaches I have, blah, blah, blah. But uh, long story short, I'm still working on it, and I'm confident that uh, I, <clears throat> sorry, I'm confident that this time uh, I'm on track, uh, but it's going to take a while to finish it up. But Luckily, um, after today's episode, we like we end up with we're going to end up with the JIT anyway. So next episode, uh, we're going to have a look at the JIT fundamentals and to uh, like go over some of the concepts that we need to know before we jump to the actual implementation. Um, that's what I'm doing these days. But as for today's episode. Uh, first of all, I forgot, like, in the previous episode, we, we talked about the code generation and how to generate the target code, but I forgot to actually show you, uh, how to do it. Like I showed, I showed you the code, but I didn't sh show you, uh, like an example of how we actually generate the, uh, target code. Let's do that right now. And let's see. What's going on? Okay, so I actually did it already. Um, so if you remember, uh, we talked about the Serene C in the previous episode. We have some like our the Serene C that CPP file is our entry point to the compiler, and as I mentioned, we're not going to keep it forever. It's going to change uh, in the future, in the near future. So if we, like right right here what i've done is that after i compile the project i just run 
Seri I, I just ran Serin C and passed two uh, dash L parameters uh, to kind of uh, imply that I want the home directory and the current directory to be in my load path. Then I like use the namespace uh, as my entry point. Like I'm asking Serene to compile this namespace for me. And then I specify the build, uh, build directory to be the current directory. And finally, I'm asking the compiler to emit some target code for me. Um, beside target code, beside target, I can actually use uh, object as well. If, if, if I want only the object file, I can use object. Otherwise, when I use target, it means like, give me the binary. And as you can see, um, like in the output, like I have two new files, one called output and output.o. This is the object file, and like we talked about it in the previous episode, when we link the object files together, we're going to get the binary, uh, executable binary. And again, if I want to change the name, I provide the dash O uh, parameter to say, okay, here's the output name I want. It creates the output for me as well. But... Um, the reason I have all this is that because it's the second take I'm uh, second take on this episode. I already uh, recorded it once, but uh, there was some uh, wrong information. I had to re-record it. So anyway, um, if you look at the object file to, to see what symbols does it contain, uh, we see that there's a main and main one symbol. And if we look at the uh, look at the uh, executable file again we see some other symbols that is created by our uh, linker we don't care about them right now but what we uh, what's important is main one and main function uh, so we ended up with like an executable file with the functions that we actually need so what was it hello yeah this is the uh, string code that we compiled to the executable binary. As you can see, we have two functions, def, uh, uh, sorry, main and main one, and we had them in the symbol as well. Since we, uh, since our language doesn't have any spec yet, and we're not uh, kind of, uh, we don't want to have that and think about that at this stage. This is the best thing we can get. This, uh, like our executable doesn't do anything at all. But the fact that we can actually generate target code, legit target code, is good enough for us. Remember, for the first stage of the compiler, we just want the wiring. We want all the pieces in place with the most basic functionality possible. And we want them to work together uh, to do something. And later on, we're going to build upon that and uh, enhance any uh, every component on its own. So um, there was one more thing I wanted to mention. Um, what was it? Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> so uh, let's go back to the slides. That was the uh, um, only thing that I forgot to do from the previous episode. So about today's episode, the main topic. So, um, source manager is a concept that is not really related to LLVM. Um, it's something related to the front end code. So every front end might have, like, might manage the source code differently. But if you look at the LLVM's examples and like documents, you see, you get to see the source manager quite a lot. My first attempt, like. At first, I didn't have any source manager. I used to just load the file, like read the file manually, or store it somewhere in the memory and do some stuff on it. But little by little, I was like, OK, I, I need to use a, a entity to manage my source code, all the sources, not just like uh, sources on the file system. And that is what a source manager uh, do, right? So. 
it's a source manager by by definition manages all the source codes and owns everything related to the source files on the disk it doesn't have to be on the disk you can like i don't know you can read it from a, like network you can um extract it from an archive or whatever right but, but the most basic and the most common uh, use case is to read a file on the file system and do something with it and that's what we're going to do again most basic functionality and we have this entity it owns the source code and like we have to use it for whatever we need uh, on source code level on source file level like including different files uh, associating namespaces with file names and stuff like that or like uh actually in the example that i showed you just showed you right we asked the compiler to compile this namespace for us we didn't say where to find it right so this is actually one of the functionalities that we need to implement in our source manager that being said i tried to use so lvm comes with a built-in source manager i tried to use it but unfortunately uh the current implementation of the llvm source manager is heavily tied to clang compiler so i'm going to show show you the uh, official source manager first by official i mean like the llvm's version first and then i'm going to show you uh, our own version uh so actually let's let me just show you the code mm, include lvm support source manager yeah so this is the actual source manager that you can find on the llvm uh, source tree it's not it's quite simple like it does some uh some basic stuff for uh, like to begin with, it have a it has a vector of buffers that each buffer obviously represents a file on the file system. And all the functionalities that the source manager actually provides is going to be helper functions around the same uh, idea. Like we have a vector of buffers and we have some helpers that uh, do some stuff to that vector uh to begin with uh there's a there's a kind of a i don't know what to call it actually like uh lsvm source manager has this i it's not generic enough but it ha it let you to customize some of this stuff right i wish it would have been like if the source manager was more generic i would have used it but it's not that generic. It has some, like, it lets you to customize some of the aspects, but in general, it's not. One of those aspects is the diagnostic handler. So the front end should have its own diagnostic engine, right? So when something happens, something bad happens, uh, like a fatal error or like a panic or something, or even like a normal errors that we need to uh show to user uh we're going to use that diagnostic engine i'm going to show it to you in the future our our own version is not complete yet it's just there uh, to act as a, like a proof of concept code but uh it's not complete at all but right now as you can see here we can pass a, like a function pointer as a diagnostic handler to the source manager and ask like to handle any failure it should like it should be a function that gets a, like a, a sm diagnostic and a pointer to a thing called context like a opaque pointer um basically whenever something bad happens in the source manager and source manager needs to raise an raise an error it calls to this uh and there's a um, a built-in structure called the src buffer which is quite simple it's just a pointer to a memory buffer and some functions to work with it 
functions like uh, like we we hold the uh, all the parts like all the end of line uh, positions in our buffer to kind of split the buffer into lines and do some calculations on them like uh, some function to get on a specific uh, line based on uh, like a pointer or uh, like a line number or stuff like that there's something called uh, this one is kind of important this line is called uh, which is like include location this is actually one of the uh, one of those um, features that are kind of clangy you know like in c and c plus plus as you already know we have the include macro uh, preprocessor so we, we can actually include other files in our current file and this thing in here hold the location sm location is like a location type uh in llvm it's a, like a single uh single location no I can't uh, remember what uh, what is the SM stands for. Oh, source manager. Yeah, source manager location. So it just points to a character in our buffer, and it like we a source manager uses include location to remember that like the current buffer is included in like what like where basically right. So when we include a file into our current file clang would use the source manager to figure out what, where that file is and load it into memory into that buffer and then use the include location to point to the actual location in the original file where this file got uh, included um one other thing is the actual vector that i was talking about is here so it's just a vector of src buffers and src buffer by itself is just a, like a unique pointer to a memory buffer no uh, nothing like uh, special and some other uh, metadata that source manager need, needs to operate like include directories again uh, like a c plus c and c plus plus c concept like where to look for uh, header files and stuff like that or not header files only like for include directories um like some setters and getters nothing really special and uh, yep and some uh, functions to actually deal with any uh, warning any error or basically work with the diagnostic handler this is the actual LLVM uh, implementation. It's really like one of the actual uh, problems that I had with the LLVM source manager is that it designed for Clang and it designed with C and C++ in mind. I looked into Clang. It, it, uh, apparently it has its own source manager, but when I talked to LLVM folks and uh, LLVM developers, they told me that the Clang's version is old. They want to use LLVM's version. That's why the, uh, the source manager is like this. I actually uh, suggested uh, on the mailing base, I started a discussion around the uh, source manager to kind of uh, make it more generic. Uh, it's not generic, generic enough, so I can't customize it the way I want, want it to and use it in my front end. Um, but in my understanding, uh, the source manager in LLVM is supposed to be internal. It's not a public API, but we can see it in like many tutorials and examples. And that's why I had to actually copy paste the code and like remove the pieces that I don't want and add the stuff that I need to for our own uh, front end. And I ended up with our own version of the source manager that I'm going to show you. Just really quick, I forgot to tell you about something. So um, there's some other classes here like SM Fixit and SM Diagnostics. Uh, diagnostic. Uh, the Fixit is kind of like a data structure that holds hints for any possible issue in the 
source code like when we uh, when the source manager parses the file there might be some issues that we can actually hint the user to fix it we use this data structure to provide hints to the user to fix different syntax issues and sm diagnostic or source manager diagnostic is just a data structure to report back diagnostics to the handler if we take a look at our own source manager so this is our own source manager it started as a copy of llvm's source manager but i had to change it a little bit so the src buffer is uh, is the same just few uh different tweaks like instead of holding an sm location to point to the like a included location we have something called uh, import location and we use our own location range because like our own location we can easily convert it to any llvm or mlir type location a location type sorry and that's easier for us we're going to we we use uh, location range everywhere why not to use it here as well it's easier to use it and as you can see there's no diagnostic handler anymore because we uh, we have our own diagnostic engine we really don't need uh, our source manager to be generic enough like it's inside our own compiler yeah, we're not going to serve it as a like a library for other front ends we, we're like a leaf node in the tree of uh, um, different abstraction layers uh, compiler needs so nobody's going to be depends on our source manager that's why we don't need to be generic so i remove the uh, diagnostic handler and we're going to use our engine directly which is baked into our context I'm going to show you in the future uh, some other stuff that i uh, i added is a uh, um, where is it, it, it uh, i added something like a hash map called ns table it's a string map a string map is like a hash map with a string keys uh a string keys maps to whatever type you provide as a template uh that i use the uh, unsigned type here what it does is to map the name of a namespace to the buffer id we use the buffer id to locate the buffer in our vector so for example buffer id one uh, zero is the like first buffer in in the vector i added like i changed the include directories like repurpose it to load paths and uh, like find file find file in load pass is one of the most important um, um, functions in our class and then another uh, we have a, like a we have some getter and setter it's not important like uh, give me the a reference to the buffer id blah or uh, uh, get me a reference to a buffer that belongs to name and space blah right and we have a function which is our kind of the official entrance to our uh, source manager read namespace it gets us a context and a name it's supposed to be like a, a namespace name and finally a location for a import location let's have a look at the actual implementation of the source manager First of all, we have a helper function called convert namespace to path. What it does is to actually convert the namespace name to a path with some rules. So the basic rule is that replace any dot in the namespace with underline. Uh, so if we have a namespace, for example, serine dot user, it's going to be translated into serene underline sorry and eventually we're going to attach the file suffix to it it's going to be ended up like this right nothing special it's just a helper to do that and like we use the internal 
not internal, uh, a library in LLVM that is provided to do some uh, like pass manipulations, like convert this pass to a platform native pass. So on Linux, it's going to have a slash, like the directory separator should, would be on a slash on a, like a Windows system, it would be a backslash or stuff like that. Um, then we have a uh, find file in the load pass. It's actually quite simple. It gets two references, one to a uh, string for the NS name, and then to uh, another string for imported file. Um, it converts the name to a path, and then it tries to find, like loop over all the paths we have in the load path, and try, like, try to find the file in the load paths in order that uh, provided by the user. If it find the file, it's going to uh, set the import file to the full path and uh, return otherwise, like, and read the file, put it in the buffer list, buffer vector, and uh, return a reference to it. Otherwise, uh, it's going to return null pointer. Sorry, I, I said uh, reference, but we need a pointer here. It returns a pointer actually. And finally, uh, the most important function, uh, read name space, gets a context, NS name and import location. Try to find the file in the load path. If there wasn't such file, return an error. Otherwise, uh, add the source buffer to our uh, vector the vector of buffers that we had and get the buffer ID. And then you uh, set the NS table, assign the NS name with the buffer ID. If the buffer ID was zero, there's something wrong. Actually, I, uh, I mentioned earlier uh, that the buffer, buffer ID is actually referred to the index of each uh, buffer in the vector beside zero. Zero is a different story for us. So it should be begin with one. And finally, get the get a pointer to a buffer, pass it to the read function. I had to change the read function to actually use the, uh, use the new source manager and the memory buffer and everything. I'm going to show it to you in a, in a bit. If there wasn't any syntax error, if there was, return it. Otherwise, create a namespace, expand the tree. I, I have to uh, show you the expand tree. Expand the uh, namespace tree with the AST that we got from the reader, and finally return the uh, reference. Uh, no, return a shared pointer to the namespace. Um, so. One thing to mention here is that like I like this is how we return errors in our implementation. If you remember from few episodes, uh, like uh, I guess like two, three episodes, previous episodes, um, we have a, where is it? Yep, we have a type called um, result which we use it quite a lot. It has two different state, either a success case or an error case. And uh, like here we return a maybe, uh, and maybe NS, right? Maybe NS defined as a result to a namespace pointer, which is a shared pointer to a namespace for the success case. And for an error case, we return an error tree. If we look at the error tree, error tree is just a vector of error pointers and error pointers are just shared pointer to errors. So what happens is uh, when we want to return an error, we need to actually uh, return a vector of error pointers. And I created some helper functions around them to make it easier for me to actually handle the entire situation. For example, make error tree gets like import location in what location this error is happening what type of error it is like this is and finally a reference to the 
uh, message which we have here uh, i can show you the error stuff but it does there its own uh, episode right now um right now like it's not really um i didn't do it with the best design here no actually it does yeah i have a file that i keep like i make errors in it like i have a reason uh to do this but uh i'm going to like explain it in a dedicated episode but uh, what i'm going to tell you here is that when you see this file if you uh, look in the source code and you came across this uh, you come across this file don't panic this thing is going to go away and be replaced by a table gen uh, backend so we're going to define our errors in a, like a uh, ods style uh, syntax and i'm going to write a backend for table gen to kind of generate everything uh, from that ods style uh, a script maybe i don't know what to call it um let's go back let's go back to the main topic so this is how we actually return errors uh, everywhere uh, in this function so as a short summary what we're doing here is we ask the uh, source manager to find and load the namespace for us it go on like it try to figure out where on the file system that uh, namespace like lives it try to find it in the load path by looping over uh, every pass in the load path and if it finds it it's going to pass it to the reader uh, and then call a function called expand tree in of the namespace and return a uh, shared pointer to that namespace this expand tree is a little bit important, so let's have a look at what it is. By the way, if you uh, look at the master branch, this expand tree uh, is renamed to add tree. There's a reason for it. I'm going to tell you when we talked about the, when we're going to talk about the JIT stuff. Um, but right now, expand tree gets an AST and run the semantic analyzer on it if everything was all right expand the current tree that uh, the current namespace holds with the given um, not the uh, given uh, with the ast that is resulted from the semantic analyzer and if you remember when we talked about the namespace stuff namespace actually have a what do we call it in c++ a member yeah has a member called ast uh with the type of with the type ast which is called tree this ast here is a vector of uh, nodes so um, practically this vector here holds all the uh nodes that current namespace holds um yeah uh, let's have a look at the reader next so Reader this is it. All the changes that, that I had to make was around the fact that we need to uh, work with buffer managers as well. So the read function has two variants right now. It can get a, re a reference to a memory buffer or can get a, like a string ref, like get the string as the input. So memory buffers on their own uh we can actually uh, reference them with a string ref as well so we can use a string ref in a uh, let me rephrase so we can actually pass a string reference to a memory buffer so treat it as an a string as a reference to an a string inside a buffer right that's what the uh, uh, read function like that's how i change the read function and then if i remember correctly i use like previously we used to uh we used to uh fail in place when we had an issue in like a syntax error anywhere we had to raise an exception but now we actually uh return uh, errors like before right 
So yeah, as you can see, ooh, no, I messed up something. So right now we don't return anything. Like in we do in master, but not in this branch, which is for episode 13. Uh, what we do is to actually raise an exception with the diagnostic engine and terminate the execution flow. This thing is changing the master, but it's not in the current branch. And I'm going to leave it like this for now because there's a reason to change it in the future, which I did in master. So that's the entire changes that I had to make for uh, the reader to make it kind of uh, integrated with the source manager. And finally, on the content uh, context header file, I added the source manager here. And if we have a look at our, uh, sorry, Serene, yep, at our Serene C file, like the entry to our compiler, instead of the previous uh, approach, which we had to kind of find the file, load it in, uh, read it, and uh, use the content, pass it to the reader, we just call the read namespace now, the function that I showed you. So in the context, there should be a, there's a, like a source manager object that we can use to uh, work with uh, the file system and file, uh, source files. Um, it's quite simple. Return the namespace, check whether there's a result or not. If there's an error, return, like do something with the error. Otherwise, use the value, success value, which is on a shared pointer to a namespace and do the same stuff as before so that's it for today folks um source manager is not really complicated if you have a look at the source code you'll find it's quite easy uh it's a uh, it's something that kind of depends on different front ends each front end might do something it's like it do, might do it differently but I try to uh, stick with what LLVM, like with the culture of LLVM, uh, use the same terminology and everything. And it does uh, what I need, so uh, I'm happy with it. Thanks again. Um, if you like what I'm doing, please subscribe to the channel and see you in the next episode. Have a fantastic time.